All right, folks, we have more housing market data to discuss. Data that reveals the housing affordability crisis that we've been dealing with here in 2023. And this new Redfin report actually provides a glimmer of hope that homebuyer conditions are going to improve moving into 2024. And before we begin, hit that like button and consider subscribing. It helps grow and promote the channel and I appreciate your support. All right, so according to Redfin, affordability challenges have reached a record high moving into 2023. In fact, homebuyers with the median US income had to spend a record high amount, 41.4% of their earnings on monthly housing costs. Now this is up pretty substantially from where we were just two short years ago before mortgage rates started to see a major spike. Now the general rule of thumb would actually suggest that you wanna spend no more than about 30% of your income on housing costs. And you could see based on that rule of thumb over the last decade, housing has remained relatively affordable. Now what is really wild if you ask me is that the typical home buyer in 2023 would need to earn an annual income of at least $110,000 per year in order to stay within that 30% affordability guideline. It is important to note there are major regional disparities in affordability. In fact, if you look at this chart, California absolutely dominated the list of least affordable metros throughout the United States. And this is a list of 50 metros. So the top five here is gonna be San Diego, Los Angeles, San Jose, San Francisco, and Anaheim. And if we just use Anaheim as an example, this is the least affordable market in the country according to this data here. We have a median home price of just over a million dollars, median household income is 92,000. And if the typical home buyer wanted to go out and purchase a home out here, they would need to actually spend 88.3% of their income in order to buy that median price home, which is simply not gonna happen. Their wages are so far disconnected from home prices, making this completely unaffordable and pricing them out altogether. Now on the flip side, Midwest metros, areas like Detroit, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Philadelphia, and St. Louis, these ranked among the most affordable metros throughout the entire country. But what I found very interesting is that out of the list of 50 of the most populous metros, only nine of these metros fell under that 30% rule of thumb, which means that 41 out of the 50 metros have become significantly more unaffordable. Now, of course, the factors or the drivers that are contributing to this affordability crisis in the housing market in 2023 are going to be mortgage rates primarily. Mortgage rates have gone up dramatically here over the last 18 months. This has a lot to do with the Federal Reserve raising the Fed funds rate. There's not necessarily a direct correlation between the Fed funds rate and where the 30-year fixed rate mortgages are. However, there is at least a reasonable correlation. So as the Fed funds rate went up, mortgage rates went along with it. They hit roughly a 20-year high in October, topping out at about 8%. That put the average mortgage payment for the median priced home at 27% per month. That is a record high. Now, fortunately, rates have started to fall a little bit, but they're still hovering around 7%. That brought the average mortgage payment down to $25.61. It's about $180 per month savings from the peak. However, if you look at this chart, you can see that just in a three-year span, the average mortgage payment has jumped from about $1,500 a month up to north of 2,500. That's a thousand dollar swing, a dramatic impact on housing affordability. Now the elevated mortgage rates have actually cooled home buyer demand. However, home prices have remained relatively high due to the low supply. Median sales price right now is sitting at 431,000. We had a peak in the fourth quarter of 2022 at about 480,000. So we've seen roughly a 10% pullback in housing prices. I believe that what is happening right now is we're seeing segments of the market impacted differently. The move up home is seeing more weakness. The luxury market is seeing more weakness and that's driving more demand into that entry level home. All right, so the good news or the glimmer of hope here is that housing inventory is actually increasing. The bad news is it's not increasing by much. According to this chart here, in November of 2023, we had about 755,000 active listings according to realtor.com. That's up 1% from last year, but it is up 48% from the height of the pandemic housing boom that we saw in November of 2021. The downside is, is we're down about 34% from 2019 levels, 
where we saw inventory sitting just north of about 1.1 million homes for sale. Now, seasonally speaking, it is not normal to see inventory increase in November. In fact, here's how the inventory shifted between October and November over the last seven years. In November of 2017, we had about 59,000 fewer listings, and that trend continued all the way up until about 2021 with 53,000 fewer listings going into November. Then in November of 2022, we only had 2,500 fewer listings and going into this year, so November 2023, we had 17,000 more listings than is normal for this time of year. Now, the big picture here is that the increase in active listings in November 2023, it's a clear sign that the U.S. housing market underwent a more pronounced cooling than what is normal for November undoubtedly influenced by mortgage rates exceeding 8% during a seasonally soft window. However, national inventory levels still remain well below the pre-pandemic levels, which of course is suggesting more of a balanced housing market as opposed to a crashing one. Now, according to Redfin, their prediction for 2024 is that we're going to continue to see more listings hit the market. We're gonna to continue to see mortgage rates fall down to about 6.6%. .6 and as a result, home prices are gonna drop about 1% by year's end. Now, on that note of rates coming down, the market does seem to be pricing in a higher probability that the Fed is going to reduce their rate as well. And they can do it as early as the first quarter of 2024. So if we take a look at this chart here, at the moment, the Fed funds rate is between 5.25 and 5.5%. And on their next few meetings, the probability is over 90% that they will pause or keep rates the same. However, when we go into March of 2024, you can see that the probability of a 25 basis point rate cut increases to uh, almost 44%. And then going into May's meeting, it jumps up to nearly 50%. And we even saw an increased probability of 27.5% that we'd see a 50 basis point reduction. But in my mind, the first question that I ask is why would the Fed reduce rates at this time? I mean, inflation has certainly drop from the peak we saw in June 2022 at 9.1%, but still, as of today, we're sitting at 3.2%. Now, the Fed's inflation target is 2%, so we haven't even reached it yet. So why is the market all of a sudden pricing in more rate cuts? If everything is strong and the economy is doing so great, why would we go to reduce rates at this time? And one of the most recent quotes from Jerome Powell, the Federal Reserve Chair, on December 1st, he said, it would be premature to conclude with confidence that we have achieved a sufficiently restrictive stance or to speculate on when policy might ease. We are prepared to tighten policy further if it becomes appropriate to do so. Is Jerome Powell talking tough because he doesn't want asset prices to just explode from here? So he wants to make sure that he leaves the door open for future rate hikes? Um, or is the market pricing in maybe a hard landing or a recession? And they're thinking that we're gonna be in a position where we have to lower rates in order to stimulate growth in the economy. Now, of course, at the end of the day, we don't have the ability to predict the future. Nobody can tell us with certainty what is going to happen. There are no certainties. There are only probabilities. So we have to make the best decisions with the information that we have. For a potential home buyer in today's market, they just wanna make sure that they're well capitalized and whatever they're purchasing, they can afford it comfortably. All right, and that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. If you haven't done so already, hit that like button, consider subscribing, helps grow and promote the channel, and I appreciate your support. Take care.